Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I just want to say before I get started, as always, thank you so, so much to everybody who watches and likes and comments and subscribes. It just, it means so much to me. I am so very, very grateful for every single one of you. So just thank you so, so much. All right, so today's video was actually inspired by a viewer of mine. She asked me about some embarrassing things that had happened throughout this pregnancy. Well, I kind of wasn't sure how to approach this because my pregnancy hasn't been that bad um, compared to other things I've heard or other people's stories. But I did actually make a list. So I'm not going to call it embarrassing things that have happened. And I only have nine things. I'm going to call it things that happen during pregnancy that really are not explained to you um, all that much. To be honest, in a lot of the videos I watched, like while Bryce and I were trying to get pregnant, I didn't actually hear of any of these things. I heard of a couple, but never in full detail. And so I never really, of course, understood it until I got pregnant. So I'm still pregnant. <laughs> I also have a clip um, here of baby moving. It's not super long. It's like the little one knows. He knows when I have the camera out. So I will insert that here. Okay, so um, I only have nine things that were never really fully explained to me before I got pregnant. Definitely, of course, I would never take back being pregnant ever, ever, ever in my life. <laughs> um, I love this. I love my child and I will definitely have more children. Um, this doesn't change that as well as just remember that every single pregnancy and every single person is different. So while I experience these things, they might not be things that you will experience um, or you'll experience it, but at a different, in a different volume or a different way. So, okay. My number one thing is saucy pants. And that's what actually a girl that I know from around my area called it is saucy pants. And at the beginning of my pregnancy, I was just, I just giggled at this, but now I 100% understand what she's talking about. So what I mean is the crazy amount of discharge. Okay. The discharge is nuts. You guys, not a word of a lie. So like for me, I have had days where I have actually had to change my underwear a few times throughout the day because I have so much discharge coming out. So you just feel like really wet and gross and like, blech. it's like you peed yourself um, at the same time as you're like kind of a little sticky. It's really not comfortable to have happen. And even if it's not enough where you have to change and you like can clean your underwear, it's still not good. So your choices are change your underwear often or wearing a panty liner. So my discharge is like a thick, a thick, creamy white discharge. And this is 100% normal to experience throughout your pregnancy because I asked, of course. 100% um, normal, totally healthy. It's really good, apparently, my doctor said. It's just so much, like so much of it. And there were days where I'd be walking and all of a sudden I'd feel like I peed myself and I didn't pee myself. That's how much discharge had come out and it would come out in like clumps. So 100% normal thing to have happen. However, super uncomfortable. My second thing is bladder control. So in my earlier videos um, about my first trimester, second trimester, I kind of went over um, my bladder control just when I was doing the updates. But going further in now, so during my first trimester, my bladder control was good. It was just the hormones that played a factor in there. So when my hormones were so high in the first trimester slash kind of going into the second trimester, my 
self, I would, I would, I would wet my pants. Like not a crazy amount where, you know, you need to change your pants or anything, but I would, I would tinkle. I would tinkle a little bit. And I have said this word in other videos, but in the beginning, that was all 100% due to hormones. But then as I got further into the third trimester, my belly grew more pressure, of course, my tinkling has increased to pretty much every day. Like I just, I just know what's going to happen. I just expect it. Like I wear a panty liner. It just is what it is. Um, when I was in the second trimester, I would really notice that I would tinkle myself, uh, if I laughed or coughed or sneezed and I was my bladder, like you could feel your bladder getting full and then I would tinkle myself. Go into the third trimester and it doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter how full your bladder is. You just do it. It's just like, I, I know your body's getting ready to give birth and everything's kind of softening up and loosening up down there. Your ligaments are, you know, loose and flowy and stuff. And so you have less control. And sometimes uh, he is very low. And so sometimes if he moves too much down there or jolts a little bit, I'll tinkle. And it's super, I have to admit, I have fully peed myself three times um, since becoming into the full third trimester. One was, and so, Bryce was making me laugh and I had, I was laughing really hard. I had no control, I peed myself. A full on pee, super disgusting, had to go change, shower, the whole nine yards. And you know, bless Bryce's heart for like, not really saying anything about it. He's very, very good. Second time was we were on a walk. <laughs> and again, he made me laugh and the dogs were making me laugh and I peed myself. And again, a shower and a change. Uh, and the third time was I sneezed. I simply sneezed and I full on peed myself. Number three is gas. So gas is my nemesis now. And I gotta say, throughout this pregnancy, it really hasn't been that bad. I can't actually complain about gas all that much. However, going into the third trimester, things have changed. So burping and farting, gas obviously, um, have definitely 1000% increased. So normally when you burp, obviously you can tell, you can kind of hide it, yada, yada, yada. I always hear my dad in the back of my head telling me to be a little lady. So now my gas is, has control, I guess, of my body and I can be talking and I'll just belch like in the middle of my sentence and I have absolutely no control. It just comes on out. I can't control it. I can't stop it. I can't change it. The same with my farting was I could always be discreet. Like that was my one thing I was like kind of proud of myself about before. I could always be so discreet about farting. Like I could just let it out. Nobody knew life was grand and they weren't always deadly. However, now I have no control. I butt squeak. I swear, I hope somebody else has been through this because I butt squeak. Um, so sometimes I'll just be walking and I'll just fart and it comes out like a loud squeak and I have absolutely no control over it. Same with sitting down on a toilet. I sit down on a toilet and I'm guaranteed to fart. And of course it's always in the middle of the night when it echoes throughout the house or when like we have the TV and stuff shut off and Bryce is sitting on the couch waiting for me so we can take the dogs for a walk. And I'm like, well, I better pee before we go for a walk. And I'll sit down and it just echoes and he can hear it. And he like doesn't make fun of me, but I know he knows. And it's just, it's awful. Like going to somebody's house when you're talking, to, like, and it's quiet and you go to sit or you go to walk or you bend and get up. The gas takes over people. Just saying gas takes over everything and it's not the most fun experience in the entire universe um number four is leaky boobs leaky boobs 
So before Bryce, the lovely, lovely man he is, ordered me my um, breast pads, I had obviously leaky boobs before that and it started fairly early on. Um, it's definitely started in the second trimester that I started leaking colostrum. And most times when I go out in public, I always had bra on. So it was fine. I could feel my boobs leaking and like the uncomfortableness of it, but it wasn't really too, too bad. Um, the only thing afterwards would be depending on the bra I was wearing, like you have to like peel your bra off your nipples because it like, yeah, it like gets all crusty and sticks and it, yeah, it wasn't comfortable. And in the evenings when I'm home, I don't wear a bra because it's just Bryce and I, and it's not that big of a deal. But I have to change, I'd have to change my shirt a lot. I have like wet marks, obviously, and like dribble marks. And I don't know why I found that embarrassing because it's not like Bryce didn't know what was happening. And like, even he has said a few times to me, like, that's good. Like, that's a good sign. And it is a good sign. Uh, it's just that it, I don't know. It made me feel uncomfortable. Like I'm good about it now and it doesn't bother me and I'll just be like, yeah, my boobs are leaking. But at the beginning, you guys, I really struggled with the fact that I would have marks on my shirt and I don't know why. And it's such a good thing, you know, but I can't even tell you why it embarrassed me. There's a lot of things going through your pregnancy that you learn to deal with, you learn to accept. Number five, this is one thing nobody really told me was bad, heartburn. So people would say, oh, you'll get heartburn. If you get heartburn, your baby's gonna be born with a lot of hair. And that was where they would leave it. I was never someone before that actually got that much heartburn. I think I didn't even, I don't remember ever having heartburn until like, 24 or 5 and I remember asking somebody if that was what heartburn felt like because I literally had no idea so going into this pregnancy I was like okay like I could get heartburn like not a big deal uh hello I had heartburn every single day in the first trimester and sometimes all day long I would wake up in the middle of the night with my throat on fire like you feel sick ish your chest that's heartburn. It would wake me up in the middle of the night in the first trimester. It sort of subsided in the second, but rolling back on into the third, yeah, she's picked up. And in the middle of the night, again, I get woken up from heart. Like, it's so uncomfortable. Like, you're at work and you just can't focus because your throat is burning and your chest and you just, and then tums aren't helping and it's just a very uncomfortable feeling. So just be like forewarned, guys that the heartburn can go zero to 100. And when somebody says you could have heartburn, just know that you could have mild heartburn or you could have what I have, severe, severe heartburn. And there are days where absolutely nothing, like rollies won't work and tums won't work. Number six would be oiliness. So um, it's like going back to being in puberty period of my life. No, not so much fun. So, of course, growing up, I had combination oily skin during puberty, which is whatever. And as I've gotten older, I pride myself in my skin. I take very, very good care of my skin. I use only the certain things that agree with my skin. I take very good care of it. Anyways, coming into, I'd say this kind of started at 36, 37 weeks. I know I haven't mentioned it in my updates, um, but I'm mentioning it now. I have it written down and I was like, wow, I haven't actually said that, but um, it's here now. <laughs> um, I will wake up with the oiliest face ever. It like shines. It's so oily. You can feel it in your pores by like in between your nose. It's just, you feel disgusting and sweaty and yucky. I haven't had that sensation literally since I was going through puberty. And it just started, of course, a couple weeks ago. And now I'm dealing with it to where I wake up and I can like pat my face. It's super disgusting, super embarrassing. And I, it, 
I hate when, you know, Bryce will come in and, and, and give me a kiss in the morning because I haven't washed my face. And I just feel like, oh, he's like, oh, she's so gross and disgusting. That's how I feel. And, or somebody shows up at our door and I'm still sleeping and I wake up and I can just feel that layer of oil on my face. And I don't know why all of a sudden now I'm getting this oiliness on my face, but it's a part of pregnancy, my doctor said. It doesn't mean anything's wrong, which I didn't think it did, but I mentioned it, of course. Um, and so I just, I just don't like it. So I now have a system. Of course, I've always had a system. My system has always been wash my face in the morning with all my stuff, put my good products on, go about my day and live my life. Things would be fine. Wash my face in the evening. But because of the increase in the oil on my face now, I get up in the morning, do my normal routine, and usually after my afternoon nap, when I wake up, I have to wash my face again, reapply my stuff, and then of course the bedtime where I wash my face with something different before bed. So it is increased, and sometimes during the day, like there are some days I don't have a nap, or my nap gets interrupted and I have to go and help my dad or somebody else, I can feel the oil on my face, like I can, I feel like everybody's staring at me because, oh my God, look at the oil on her face. Like, look how shiny her face is. Number seven is the waddle. I'm making this sound like a game show and I don't really know why, but anyways. So I'm nine months pregnant. I understand I waddle. I'm cool with it. Bryce picks on me about it. It's whatever. I waddle and that's that. Like my baby is low. He's continuously dropping, which is a good sign. Um, and that's fine. Like I knew this was going to happen. Well, I didn't know it was going to happen. I suspected it was going to happen. It's a normal part of pregnancy. I'm literally at that stage in my pregnancy where like I give zero, zero, zero cares of what other, like what other people think about that. But the looks that people give you. What on earth? Like, I have had people giggle at me and like point. I just don't understand. Like, is it because I'm pregnant or is it because I'm waddling? Like, I don't really understand that. And so it makes me feel uncomfortable. My next one, which is number eight, but I feel like it's number seven, number eight, the community in the public. So I don't know about you, I don't know about any of y'all, but for me, I live in a very small town. Most people know of you or who you are or whatever, or you say you're like, for me, I'll be like, oh, I'm, you know, my dad's daughter. And they'll be like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so it's, it's a smaller community. However, there are some complications with that sometimes. Um, people always have something to say. They always have an opinion and they get in your bubble. I don't like people in my bubble. My fat, my close friends and my family, I don't care. You can touch my belly. You can like do whatever, like I'm comfortable around you. I don't care. But someone who, yes, I know you've worked at the grocery store my entire life. Yes, I know you on a first name basis. I know your kids, whatever, like I babysat your grandchildren. Like we share information that way. Don't feel so comfortable with you like randomly touching my belly when I'm walking down an aisle just because you feel like it. Maybe other people do or you don't care and that's fine. And I'm not like I don't get mad at these people, but I will say something if I'm particularly made uncomfortable because I feel like this is my body and you don't just randomly touch people. Like you need to, like it's just, you. along with that, when I'm in the city, I will get a lot of stares. So people, I don't know if it, they're like, oh, she's pregnant, oh, how cute. Or if it's like, oh, she's pregnant. Or if it's like, you look too young or you look really gross or like, oh, you're wearing that or, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Is it judgmental? Is it nice? I have no idea. But the stares I get when I go to the city is ridiculous. I can literally walk down an aisle and guaranteed every single person I walk by stops to stare. I don't, I don't understand. 
Like, I just don't get it. Along with that, here are some comments I thought I would share with you guys that have been said to me. Okay, so anyways, leaving off where I was before, when someone says that, like, I look too young to be pregnant, it is very flattering, like, absolutely. It's just, at the same time, if you, like, when that's said, depending on where my emotions are, it sometimes just irks me a little bit. Like, I don't know why, but it's also very flattering. So I've also um, had people say, you need to eat more. I hate that comment. You need to eat more. Hate that comment, you guys. I just don't understand why people say that to me. I am, I was small framed before I got pregnant. And so people like, it's like if, because I didn't blow up like a ginormous fish, they're just, they're, they just assume I'm starving myself. Like I just, I hate that. I've always hated that. And I think this goes back to being a child, like younger because people would always say to me, I need to eat more. And I've literally always been someone who eats all the time. Like I eat all the time. I eat until I'm full. And then when I get hungry again, I eat again. Like I just don't understand that. And like, you don't know me personally. You don't know if I'm healthy or not, you know? And like, I am very healthy. And of course, so is my child. I'm not going to starve my child. I'm going to make sure that my child gets very good nutrition. And so people saying you need to eat more. Or, oh, you're so like, you need to eat more because you're so tiny, blah, blah, blah. Like that really irritates me. And if I'm in one of those moods where I'm emotional, like that hurts. And if I'm in one of those moods where I get mad, like it pisses me off too. So I, just, I hate that comment in general. Um, another one is, you sure you want to eat all of that? So most of the time people say that too. I've had that said to me when I made like a snack. So sometimes in my snacks, I would kind of mix healthy and have a little sweet. So I mean, like I would have grapes, strawberries, bananas, apples, and then I'd have trail mix in there. So trail mix is like your nuts, peanuts, and usually has a chocolate in there. And so that would be my snack on a plate and I love it. It's mostly healthy, minus the chocolate. Um, that's in the trail mix and I would always like get to the trail mix last and oh are you sure you want to eat that? Oh are you sure you want to have that? Oh should you be eating that? And like comments like that to like oh my god I had a bite of a chocolate bar or I had a little bit of chips like you again with you don't know what I normally eat you don't know how healthy I am so once in a while I have a little bit of a sweet thing is not bad. Oh, and it, it irritates people at the same time. So, ugh, sometimes. Another comment is, you don't even look pregnant. So again, that is actually pretty flattering. You know, at the, like at the beginning, of course, I was like, well, no. But as I got further along, it depended on the day. So like if someone was like, oh, you don't even look pregnant and I wanted to look pregnant, I guess, I get a little down and then days where I kind of felt gross and people were like, oh, you don't even look pregnant. Like you're just like a tiny little bump. It's so flattering. Like I love hearing that. So thank you. Um, and then another comment is when I was pregnant and then they trail on. So I love pregnancy stories. I love watching pregnancy videos. I love watching updates. I love watching birthing stories. I love all of that stuff. But it's just like when I haven't asked you or when you're just like some lady on the street that I ran into while I'm walking and you have to tell me your pregnancy story. I don't know. There's something about it that just is like, I'll listen because I'm polite, but oh my lanta. And it's so sweet. And you know, all these people who make all these comments mean well, but it just depends on your hormones, depends on your emotions, depends on where you're at. So that's just something. I don't know. Like I know all these people in my town mean well, 
and they're all excited for me and they're all happy for me. And most of the time it's, it's something I just like, whatever, but sometimes it gets to be too much, you know? And I hope that you guys get what I'm saying and aren't like, holy crap, she's such a bitch. Like, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, and I'm not trying to come off that way. It's just personal space. Sometimes it feels like people throw all of that out the window when they see a belly. So it's just a little irritating sometimes. All right. And last but not least on the list is emotions. So this one has embarrassed me a few times. <laughs> Everybody knows when you're pregnant, you're emotional. Your hormones are all over the place. You literally feel like you have absolutely no control over your body or what happens. You think you're doing fine. You think you're acting normal, but you're actually not. And until somebody points it out, you don't really notice it because you're just going along with your day. My emotions have taken over quite a few times. I've actually been at my desk at work and this is a fond memory. Being at my desk at work and I randomly started crying. I was, I was typing away, doing my stuff and I don't even know what I looked at, what I read. I have no idea what triggered it, but I started crying. I was just sitting there crying. No, no reason at all. So not so much fun. <laughs> um, another thing would be my annoyance. So depending on the day, I would get so annoyed. I'd have to walk away either at work or at home. I get so annoyed at like things that never really bothered me before, but it would just be the tiniest little thing. And I'd get so like so annoyed. And I kind of want to rip the person's head off. Like I was just so annoyed. And I'm like, why am I annoyed? I'd go to the back to like take a breather. And I'd be like, Kate, you get along with this person all the time. They joke around like this all the time. It never bothered you before. And why are you getting upset? You just need to take a breath, chill out and go back. But it's just like the annoyance and you know, bless Bryce's soul because when I came home, I was usually in that mood all day and then I'd come home and poor Bryce would do like the teeniest, teeniest little thing or tell like the tiniest little joke and I would just <laughs> freak out. And then afterwards I'd be, I, you know, be apologetic and I'd always feel bad. And he's been so, so good about understanding my hormones. I mean, a few times he's been like, I cannot wait until you have that baby and your emotions go back to normal. But it just is like insane how you have no control. It's like word vomit. It's like the baby's like, not even the baby. Your hormones are just like, you're going to say this and you have absolutely no control over it. Same with my anger. Like getting angry over the tiniest, littlest, insignificant thing that doesn't matter at all. And you just, you can't control it. Like I said, I know all of this is a part of being pregnant, but it was really never explained um, in full depths in videos. And so I decided I would do a video like this. Plus my one viewer uh, kind of gave me the idea. So thank you for that idea. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I know it's like a, it's a longer one, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope that I kind of explained myself well, um, gave you some laughs and let you know about some of the things that I have personally went through or experienced during this pregnancy. Like I said at the beginning, I would never ever take this back. Never. I love being pregnant. I love my child. I would go through this four or five times. Maybe we'll see how labor goes and then we'll talk about how many times I'll go through this. But the point is I would do this again. So I'm not saying this to discourage anybody and like absolutely not to discourage anybody. I'm not saying I haven't enjoyed my pregnancy and I'm not complaining. I'm just trying to put things out there that I see weren't out there. So thank you so, so much for watching everybody. I seriously appreciate it. You have no idea. Um, on your way out, don't forget to hit the thumbs up slash like button, which gives this video and my channel support. It also kind of puts this video out there a bit more for other moments to see if it's liked a lot as well as hitting that lovely subscribe button at the bottom, which again, invites you to be a part of my YouTube fam jam, which is always awesome. 
also because I upload new videos once every week. So very, very soon, hopefully we will have a birth vlog on there for you guys. So stay tuned for more videos. I have lots to show you guys, lots of editing to do. Um, and I'm very excited to share with anybody. Comment on the bottom of this video. You can private message me on my Instagram or you can privately email me. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I'm always open and I'm always open to answering anything you want to ask. And I hope you guys are doing great. I know that, you know, we're still dealing with the COVID-19 and all that's going on in the world, but I hope everyone is finding ways to stay positive and somewhat have your life be normal. So thank you so, so much for watching. Stay healthy and safe and we'll see you next time.